Can you explain? Uh, yes, of course. This talented troupe of actors must maximize the synergy inherent in the subliminal context. I believe that by encapsulating absolutely that similar meaning will we ostracate the metamorph for carbonization uh, without our mythian coincidence over into stimulectric calium. Do you see? <laughs> of course. Of course. She understands. I wish to be left alone, sir. Since you asked me what I wish, sir, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I support the establishments I've mentioned. They cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. Oh, well, if they'd rather die, they'd better do it then. <laughs> and decrease the surplus population. <laughs> it is doomed to wander through the world and witness <laughs> what it cannot share, but might have shared. Ah! <laughs> I wear the chains I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. By my own free will, I wore it. Is its pattern strange to you? Or would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear? It was as full, as heavy, and as long as this. Seven Christmases ago, you have labored on it since. It is a part of this chain. We could have had the huge territory from Mexico.
Richard III is an exquisitely dressed leather queen with a thick spanning accent. <coughs> now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean have added. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarms changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barred steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in the lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of an ewt. But I, but I'm not shaped for sporting tricks, nor made to court an amorous looking glass. I, I am rudely stamped, and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton handling him. I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world scarce half made up, and that so lame and unfashionable that dogs bark at me as I hold by them. Why I, in this weak, piping time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time. And as to spy my own shadow in the sun, and descant on my own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover to entertain these fair well spoken days, I'm determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Props of I hate, and doctrines dangerous, to set England and Spain in deadly hate against each other. What the fuck? <laughs> nothing about you, not even your name. How rude is that? Very well, Michelangelo. When you scream my name, pleading to make the pain stop, begging for mercy, you may call me Bishop. The time scepter is very close. I can feel it. Soon it will be in my grasp. And power beyond all time and space will be mine. Dark warriors, arise and do my bidding! Arise! <laughs> it's too late, Kaor. Your reign is about to end. <laughs> <laughs> Reginald Castle, 
If you can defeat me now, you will regain your memories and leave the world as its rightful ruler. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd best be off. I have an early flight in the morning. But don't you worry. There are a lot more surprises in store for you. <laughs> now, where's my little morsel? You noobs! Look what you did! Now I have to cross River Neverwhere to get to Castle Cretan! Good thing I'm hardcore! <laughs> Later, losers! Ha! Ah! You hear the sound of them crickets? That's Mother Nature. I love Mother Nature. Mother Nature loves me. I'm Uncle Hubbard, and I turn people into things. Beautiful things, like flowers. You know, one thing that Mother Nature and I both agree upon, too many people in the world, not enough beautiful things. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, he's just a dumb, just a dumb little hill. Go on, say it. He's just a dumb hillbilly. He, 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 That's right. He's just dumb hillbilly. That's what you're thinking. Hillbilly don't know nothing about science. Hillbilly never done no science experiment. He, I'll show you the power of hillbilly science. I had long since prepared my tincture. I purchased at once from a firm of wholesale chemists a large quantity of a particular salt, which I knew from my experience to be the last ingredient required. And late one accursed night, I compounded the elements, watched them boil and smoke together in the glass. When the ebullition had subsided with a strong glow of courage, drank off the potion. The most racking pain succeeded, a grinding in the bones, deadly nausea, and horror of the spirit that cannot be exceeded at the hour of birth or death. Then these agonies began swiftly to subside, and I came to myself as out of a great sickness. I stole through the corridors, a stranger in my own house, and coming to my room, I saw for the first time the appearance of Edward Hyde. I have observed that when I wore the semblance of Edward Hyde, none would come near to me at first without a visible misgiving of the flesh. This, as I take it, was because all human beings, as we meet them, are commingled out of good and evil, and Edward Hyde alone in the ranks of mankind was pure evil. <laughs> Blood is the life, Mr. Enfield.